This week on Top Billing, Olympic medalist Cameron van der Berg balances risk with reward. Over a business breakfast, Pumela Salela and Soban Tutilai each find the love of their lives. Three is a crowd, unless your trio of musicians just ginger. Will it be big trouble in the little town of Christiana at Lerato and Sichaba's Isidingo wedding? A classic man, hip-hop star Jadena, reveals his dapper style. And foodie Carmeny Patha insists on lunch at this new eatery in Cape Town. Your presenter tonight is Jonathan Boynton Lee from the home of design dynamo Lee Rain, where art and antiques work perfectly in hard-edged modern design. Good evening, it's Top Billing Night and welcome to the show. Some people don't enjoy being out of their comfort zone, Others love it, and Cameron van der Berg is one. This week, our multi-medal winning Olympian is a fish out of water and up a mountain. In spite of injury, Cameron still won silver in Rio, and right after that, two golds at the FINA World Cup in Paris. Already building towards his third Olympics, we found him as competitive as ever. Listen, I know this is your off day, but I know even on your off days you like to stay active, so I thought we'd do some rock climbing. Are you up for that? Well, I've never done it before, but uh, I'm up for the challenge. Well, I haven't done it before either. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's go for it. Okay, puts us on an even keel. Today, the Olympian was happy to play apprentice to instructor Gabriella Lee. Well, this is our first time, so we have no idea what to expect. Give us a quick rundown. Some tips with rock climbing, okay? Keep your arms straight when you're resting, okay? So when you keep them straight, you're not pulling and tensing these muscles. So it gives you a lot more endurance. Use your toes on the grips and keep your weight on your toes. Instead of pulling up on the grips, push on your feet. Okay, that sounds pretty easy, right? No, oh, easier than Olympic Games, eh? Okay. <laughs> A sprint specialist and world record holder in the 50-meter breaststroke, Cameron also knows when to take a measured approach. It's serving him well in business. Okay, just to clarify things, I know it might seem a bit off the wall that we're doing rock climbing today, but there's some method to this madness. I don't know if you're aware that rock climbing has been added to the Olympics, has been admitted as an official sport, so it'll feature in 2020. Well, at least if something doesn't work out for me, I've got another sport to join then. Exactly, you see, we've got your back. But seriously, you've got a great fallback plan in the, in the form of investment. That's, that's what you're interested in, right? Yeah, I studied investment management because I really like um, following the markets and it's quite competitive. It's the same as swimming where there's an action-reaction, you know, you try to beat, beat the market. I think it's, it was a little bit boring for me. I think everyone just puts their money in, in the, one of the institutions and, you know, you kind of leave it alone and you have no control over it. So I really liked the idea of trying to beat the market, trying to make your own decisions. And um, I started with a very small portfolio and just through learning, uh, I've come a long way. And, and um, so far, yeah, I'm very happy with, with what we've done. What do you love most about being a swimmer? I think the, the funnest thing about being an Olympic swimmer is uh, being paid to stay in shape. It's uh, not a bad gig, eh? Well, listen, not that I don't love hanging around with you, but uh... I think we've got the feel of this now. I would say we do a little bit of a race. Sounds like fun. All right. Nico realized he was in trouble when his climbing buddy mentioned he's most inspired by Elon Musk and his appetite for risk. A similar fire in Cameron made him the first man to earn four world championship medals in his discipline. This first hit out on the rock face suggests he may yet be a climbing champ too. Cameron, I should have known a champion in and out of the water. I've got another activity planned, but uh, this one I can guarantee you won't beat me at. Ooh, sounds dangerous. Oh, it is very dangerous and also incredibly illegal. Well, as long as I don't get in too much trouble. Oh, there will be trouble. The destination was a new eatery where everything's made in-house. They bake their own buns, make the mayo, pickle their pickles, and mince their own patties from premium steak. This is my field of expertise. In fact, if this was an Olympic sport, you'd be struggling to keep up all day. I don't know, judging by this, I think you might be in trouble here. But I'm gonna have fun trying to beat you. Okay, so let's do this. The trick is to build 
your own burger and to finish it when you're done. You think you can do that? Ah, oh, I think it's pretty easy actually, huh? Okay, let's get going. But let's be serious, this is not the kind of food you'd be eating all day as an Olympic athlete. What does your nutrition look like? Well, every now and then I am human, so uh, we do sneak a burger or two in. But overall, my uh, diet is quite healthy over the years. I've really picked up, just learned what's the healthier foods, what you know, what you sort of need to eat to fuel your body. It's just like a give or take how hard you're training in, in that period. Well, the Olympics is behind you. What does your training program look like now? Well, from now on, you know, Olympics is done and uh, we, we took a lot of time where you sort of peak and you rest your body and, you know, during that phase, you lose quite a lot of muscle. So now it's all about trying to rebuild. You know, we're getting into the gym. We, we're trying to gain that strength and the muscle that we lost. And uh, we, we're starting to do a lot of racing. Also, it's short course season now. So, you know, you've got to get a bit stronger, a little bit more powerful, a little bit more of a fast twitch fiber. And uh, it's also really fun. It's not as serious as what the long course is but uh, it's also in its own right a really uh, big part of the season. Now as I understand it, you got sick just before the Olympics. How did that affect your performance? Yeah, I, I got sick and unfortunately antibiotic after antibiotic, I wasn't able to shake it and eventually when I did shake it, got back into training and then I freakly dislocated my knee. So things were just going wrong after wrong after wrong and uh, unfortunately in that period you can't really train properly, especially breaststroke, it's such a rhythm stroke. And going into the games I knew that you know, I, I had one really great swim inside of me, so I tried to just really try and gauge it from the heat to the semi-final, just to try and save as much energy as I could, that I could go into the final and give it the best swim that I did. Well, you did a phenomenal job despite the circumstances. What does it feel like when you walk into that swimming arena, thousands of people watching you, millions around the world? Well, it's every athlete's dream to be able to stand on top of the podium and hear your, your national anthem being played. And fortunately, I was able to stand on the silver podium and see my flag still being raised and I had the medal on my chest and uh, the, the protea on my heart. So it was still a very proud moment. And one of the, the most special aspects is that you have your family and friends and your coaches and your support staff. And those guys sacrificed just as much as what we have to get there. And they were on the stadium with me um, celebrating. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. It was, it was uh, one of the best moments of my life still. So. You've already achieved so much. What comes next in terms of sport and the rest of your life? The next four years is going to be very crucial and uh, I'd like to go to the next Olympic Games for the one reason that I'd be the first South African, if I can, to win a medal at three consecutive Olympic Games and be the first treble winner. Well, now all that's left to do is to finish the business in hand. I'll see you on the other side. With the FINA World Swimming Champs in Canada in December, the muscle building is in full swing and we were happy to help it along. Both guys insist their effort was the gold medal winner, but where Nico couldn't beat Cameron was in the name, the Thunder Burger. Coming up, meet the groom who was proposing marriage before he'd asked the bride out. And we jam with the friends at the heart of Just Ginger. As we get set to celebrate Heritage Day, tonight we toast a couple whose full-time jobs are to promote South Africa. Pumela Salela and Sabanto Tilai met over a working breakfast that became lunch, dinner, a train ride, and soon they realized that they never wanted to ever be apart. Pumela earned an MBA with distinction through a Nelson Mandela scholarship and was voted one of the top 40 young leaders and job creators in SA. I was organizing a conference and he was a speaker there and we had such a conversation. It started there and the following day we had, uh, you know, a briefing session and after that we had dinner. And on the third day, we just knew, um, both of us just knew um, that, yes, we were the ones for each other. The first instant I saw him, I just saw this dignified man, you know, very calm. But the one thing that I caught was his broad, yet warm smile. You know, so that, those are some of the features that I remember of our first meeting. Sovantu is an engineer who champions the opportunities in our marine economy. He's a Mr. Fix-It who had quite a job getting his own outfit right. Well, this suit is designed um, by House of Ole, obviously in conjunction with the bride-to-be. And uh, I think we eventually had a small committee working on this suit. We, we had to change something about six times on it. And I think it did come out quite perfect. It makes me uh, want to be a groom very soon. The couple arranged a wedding between travel schedules that only saw them meeting every other week. Organization is Pumela's strong suit, and she had the right team. We decided that we're going to use old lampshades to give us a real antique feeling, 
And for the first time, we're really introducing a lot of duck egg blue that offsets the pink of the flowers very well. So it gives us a very old world feeling, but it's not the normal vintage theme that we have. We've got intricate little uh, jewelry boxes on the tables, urns, crystals hanging down. So everything is detailed, yet very, very simple, but it really gives a different vintage feel that we usually see. Two weeks after they met, Sobantu invited Pumela to South Africa for a strategy session on their relationship. They listed short, medium and long-term goals, including asking her parents for her hand in marriage, as well as Lobola negotiations. She realized he was serious, but observed that he still hadn't formally asked her out. He replied, how could he ask her on a date when she was already to be his wife? To be my wedded wife. The couple are convinced they're perfect for each other and they're not alone. When Pumela met Sobantu's family, his sister Ngungu broke the ice by telling the bride they'd already Googled her. They're ahead of the game, as friend Jerry Mofokeng can attest. This is consistent with who is getting married today. And I think. Everything, the, the, the quality of the people, the conversations, everything just says they got stuck. I know them from the UK. It's amazing to see how they started and how they're ending up. And I'm, I'm happy for them. The ceremony was very nice. It was very beautiful. It was amazing. I'm happy for them. And well, we are at a picnic right now and they have this wonderful idea of giving us flops. The whole blanket and the flip-flops, um, it was very considerate of the bride and the groom. Because you know, us ladies, we come to a wedding, you're wearing your heels, and then when you have to go to a place that has grass and everything, you don't think, okay, let me carry a, some, a pair of flip-flops in my bag. So it was very considerate of them. That's how the bridal party and groomsmen know them. Pumela's fun and considerate nature set the tone for the celebrations of a couple who've earned the right to party. You can tell that uh, these, uh, these are two people who are matured, uh, who, who have seen the world, and therefore they have managed to blend tradition, the past, and the present and the future. The cake in seven tiers corresponds to the biblical number for completion. For her menu, the bride asked for quiet sophistication. She's a little bit traditional, but she is very uh, modern and elegant at the same time. So she wanted something uh, that will be able to put those two together. For starters, we're having a butternut soup, which was very specific on how she wanted. And my role really was to make sure that everything she wants was done to the core and to the tea. What I think is all the outstanding details is the fact that you guys are actually here right now. I'm the son of the groom that my dad is getting married. My favorite part was like when we're at the church and like praising and singing God, to God and stuff. That's my favorite part there. With Sobantu being a comrades marathon athlete, Pumela's sure this relationship is for the long run. The challenge is managing their schedules. We lead two very busy lives. I've got an executive for Prince South Africa in the UK. I'm an executive in my own right, heading uh, maritime, the maritime industry in the country. And uh, we do plan that um, our lives shall be spent together. And um, when she asked me this question earlier, I said um, it's under construction. And I'd love to leave it at that. The words of their wedding song, My Endless Love, were ones they sang to each other in full confidence. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Tilai. Those two are so clearly meant to be together, like the members of Just Ginger. After some time going their separate ways, last year they reunited, they have an awesome live unplugged album, and Chris found them at ease and in a very good place.
thanks for the trouble. What a legendary song. I love it. I mean, that's from your album, Everything Since Then. Probably some of your greatest work to date. <laughs> since then, yeah, correct. Yeah. So we are, we're very proud of it. Um, it. We didn't know if we were able to pull it off but because we were in different cities. So we managed, we managed to do it. We all have a lot going on in our, in our personal capacities. But we got together and there was just a lot of magic. And I think the main thing was just laughter, you know? We, it's such a fun thing to do that none of us ha hassled about doing it. And we produced something that we're incredibly proud of and people need to know about it. I think at the time art was maybe in Durban or Cape Town, it was between cities. So um, <laughs> Brent right. and I were, you know, we were non-stop busy in our different projects and um, art just arrived. And he was like, I've moved to Johannesburg now, guys, let's, let's record a record. Gents, you clearly have a fantastic chemistry, but what's it like playing together again? Like we, we always joke about having a laugh and, and we always just, just falls into place, all the jokes fly, but the the love for each other and the respect we have for each other has always been there. And uh, the album came together just as, as naturally as before, as did the live album that we you know, stopped and waited now. So. On the album Everything Since Then, Art and the band have written 11 new songs. They've lost none of the edge that took them to the top. Brent, the guys say that you're a bit of a collector. From what I can see, that's very true. That's pretty cool, yeah. Selling almost 300,000 albums was pretty, it's, it's not just a rare thing those days, it's pretty much impossible these days. Of course there was a life before Just Ginger and you performed for some seriously big names. Myself and Vernie were in a band called uh, Two Princes, it was the Spin Doctors inspired name. This is a picture of us at uh, Super Bowl and we opened up for Joe Cocker and uh, the band was only 24 hours old and we got to, uh, to play at the Super Bowl. Still learning words and stuff, but it's fun. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool, man. But I mean, you've got two families, just Ginger being one of them, and uh, you've got two kids and a wife. Yeah. How's that impacted your life? Uh, my family is everything to me. Um, you know, I've got a beautiful shot of my son here at Kirsten Bosch Garden. He was two and a half years old, playing air guitar. Wow, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool, right? Very, very cool. That's when he had the nerve to walk on stage and do things like that in front of 6,000 people. He was pretty, he was pretty uh, fearless those days. Do you think he's going to be a bit of a rock himself? Um, I think he's going to be a soccer player. So. My kind of guy. <laughs> I'm speaking of that, memorabilia-wise, I got my... Uh, Is that Tottenham? Yeah, that's a Spurs shirt. Uh, I know a guy that uh, got it signed by, the, by Bale before he went to Real Madrid and the rest of the team. And there's my, there's my beautiful son. By default, as a Spurs fan as well. <laughs> I also understand that you've collected scrapbooks over the years. I'd like to see the before to now. I've got hundreds and hundreds of thousands of photographs. I've got so many scrapbooks, it's, it's, it's insane. But I'll show you a little bit. Oh, many a band, many a scrapbook, many a photograph. Ah, oh, this is a really cool picture. Uh, you know they say pictures tell a thousand words? What's that saying right there? That was us uh, messing around uh, near Ponty. We're having a lot of fun here. This was uh, just before the All Comes Round album was recorded in uh, Bob Studios. Um, it was, uh, we were all very innocent and like unaware of, of times to come. You know? Did you think that the band was going to be a success back then? No. I think the record company at the time was like, if you sell 4,000 albums, we'll be happy. And yeah, we wow. did 4,000 albums plus. What got them to 300,000 sales was a string of eight number one hits, a feat worth capturing in a commemorative photo. Hank, how are you going to bring these fantastic dudes personalities to life? Basically, they give me this poster from the tour in 1998 Australia. So we're going to try and recreate this to show people where they came from and how they've turned out and how they are now. Let's see if I can help you direct the show. Okay. The band's name comes from the expression, everything's just ginger. In other words, everything's just dandy. And that spirit is still strong between the three amigos. Right, cool, let's have a look. Oh, it's just it's looking good. Come on, let's see it, let's see it, let's see it. Here we go, chaps. Nice. Yeah, wow, nice. that's wow. close. Very nice. Yeah, man, very close. Very awesome, good. Man. Gentlemen, 18 years later, how does it feel to reenact this moment? Uh, it feels as though we did that a little over 17 years ago, to be honest. <laughs> it actually, it is a trip. We, uh, we, we were kids then, we're probably still kids now. Yeah. Well, yeah. gents, your music is timeless. You guys are looking good and you're ready to rock and roll. Guys, I think you're in a, for a surprise tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some argue the guys have rediscovered their magic. We'd say they never lost it. But what everyone agrees on is that it's brilliant to have them back. Up next, David Agboji makes an impression on both sides of the camera. Can Lerato and Sichaba's wedding go off without drama? And hip-hop's classic man, Gidena, writes a very personal debut album. Born in 
in Paris to parents from Togo, David Abadji lived in Moscow, moved to New York, and was long set on becoming a photographer. That was until the world decided that no guy that looks this good should ever be behind the lens. Having spent his childhood sketching pictures, David studied art at NYU. His success as an international model shaped his interest in photography as a means of creative expression. Now you were born in Paris, your parents are from Togo. You lived in Moscow for a little bit, but now you are back here and living in New York. Tell me how you got into modeling. I kind of started in uh, school. A friend of mine had like a t-shirt, well he was experimenting with a t-shirt line. And to be honest with you, I kind of did it because it seemed that it was a good way to get girls. So <laughs> <laughs> that was the reason. Yeah. Now you fronted numerous international endorsements and campaigns and fashion houses, and now you're the new face of Studio W. How does it feel being part of the Woolworths family? Well, listen, everybody that I met from Studio W is so nice and warm, and it, it feels good to be part of a good family, you know? It's that South African touch. But let's talk about your style. How would you describe it? I'm not really a big fan of over, you know, thinking wardrobe. Uh, I think the simpler looks, I mean, even if you overthink it, as long as it looks very simple, I'm, I'm rooting for you. But you've been quoted in uh, a couple of interviews saying you want to start a foundation, you want to change other people's lives. So what kind of causes are close to your heart? My foundation definitely needs to revolve around art. There was always a lot of art, you know, in my life. And what I think that allows you to do is dream. And you can be whatever you imagine yourself to be, but you first need to imagine it. You know, that's why art is important to me. So would you say that modeling is an art? I do think modeling is an art. I feel like you as a model, you're kind of like the muse, and you have to start to comprehend how the person behind the lens is looking at you. So you kind of have to respect that as the model and try to help them attain their objective and it's, it becomes like a team effort and you as a model, you're almost like the dancer, you know, and it's definitely the art. All right, well, we can't wait to see your dance piece with Studio oh W. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Have a lovely, lovely shoot with Andrea. It was nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you. A passionate artist who speaks four languages, David has classic appeal. From big old New York City to tiny Christiana now, that's where the annual Gold Diggers Festival is the biggest thing in town. Or it was, until Isidingo's Lorato and Sachaba decided to get married there and bring the entire cast and crew in tow. The on-screen couple's years of dating, their issues with infidelity, and Lorato's battle with cancer make way for a glamorous and joyful traditional wedding. They are national favorites and expectations are high. Today we're going to get to witness the union of Lorato and Sachaba. Everyone's been waiting for this and I suppose it's sitting a thought, wow, we need to make this a big event and that's why we came out to location to make it look fabulous. It's great to be here in Christiana. Um, it's the uh, All Seasons Resort we're shooting at. It's the backdrop for our wedding, which is a traditional wedding that we're shooting with Chab and Lorato. It's a big shoot for us. Uh, we've got over 100 people in front of the cameras and we've got a, a huge bunch behind, but a uh, great crew to work with. I think it's our second location shoot, so we've kind of been in this situation before. But over and above that, we wake up early all the time and uh, we've kind of gotten used to it. So everyone still gels nicely. It's not any different. It's a bit cold. That's probably the only negative thing there is about it. But otherwise, the atmosphere is great. Everyone's really excited and well, we're all looking forward to it. The wedding coincides with Heritage Day and its Sutu Tswana blend accentuates the bright, vibrant colors of these two cultures. I'm glad they focused on the traditional side of, of, of South African weddings. I mean, it just brings you the reality, which is Isidingo is all about. It's going to be massive. I mean, knowing what's happening in the storyline, it's going to be fun. It's very befitting that we are in Christiana and, in, and we are in the Northwest. So you see the Setswana culture coming through and you also see the Sotho, the Sotho culture coming through. I think they fall within the same language group but are different in many respects. So a celebration of that and a display of that is beautiful. Beautiful in colour and the singing, you know. I, I enjoy that as opposed to opting for a Western celebration of a wedding, as it were. 
There's a first time for everything, and one of Tema Sebopedi's bridesmaids, Michaela Russell, went traditional too. This is the wedding of, a se of the century. I think that you're very excited about this. It's such a cool storyline. And everyone's looking forward to this, mm. and it's been a long time due. So it's now. Mm. It's now or never. What I love about it as well is that it's so believable. I can 100% buy into the fact that this is a normal wedding. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's got like this, this family oriented vibe and I'm, I'm really having a lot of fun plus I get to use this this fun guy <laughs> so that's been fun yeah one of the most anticipated storylines sees Lorato's mother on the guest list not one to mince her words she adds flavor to the day with unwelcome interference and who better to play her than Sophie and Daba? Today the mother knows. She's been there, done that, she's done it. Her daughter's getting married today. Her focus is keeping an eye on her daughter so that the guy says yeah boy and doesn't run away. So she's got her eye on both of them. That's what's keeping her busy. <laughs> As the bride is on her way, the mother-in-law's jostle and financial constraints threaten to drive a wedge between the couple. It wouldn't be Isidingo without intrigue. Lots of drama. You can expect a lot of drama, you know what I mean? Because, and that's the one thing about it, Dingo. We like to keep it intrigued. You don't want to just show the happy side of a happy couple, young couple. I think more drama is definitely going to come from them. You know, we never know what Rowan's going to bring in for us, for, for our audiences. I think it's exciting. Wedding's always exciting. Mm -hmm. And real life is not predictable. So one can't always think, OK, wedding, Happy ever after. Uh, yeah, so definitely not. So I think it's going to be exciting to see what happens, yeah. what life brings for the couple. There's bound to be drama, and I think what's clever in the writing, which is true to the East Dingo style of writing, is it's never one-dimensional. There's a lot of subplots that are taking place at this very wedding venue. So Nikki Wei and I are having something. There's another love triangle that goes belly up. There's a fight. So. You know, with this celebration, a lot of things are happening on the purpose. I think we grabbed the viewers of these two characters because they're probably two of our most popular characters on the show. They've been on the show for such a long time. Uh, Motlatsi and Tema, who play um, Suchaba and uh, Lorato, incredibly popular, both great actors. But I think the audience kind of saw this coming from way back. And this is kind of the realization of the dream for, for the characters and, and hopefully, for the, uh, hopefully for the audience as well. You can catch the entire affair tomorrow, September the 23rd at 7 p.m. on SABC3. Everyone in hip-hop packs some serious swagger. To be noticed, you need A, an epic hit like Classic Man, and B, a look like no one else. With all the rhymes and a classy Harlem Renaissance style, Jidenna definitely does stand out from the crowd. I'm a classic man. With the BBC documenting his African tour, after Jidenna's debut album launch in Nigeria, his next stop was SA. Brother, welcome back to South Africa. What's your experience been like so far? It's been amazing, man. The, the reception's been great. I always love coming here, man. It's, it's nice. It's beautiful, first of all. But there's a lot of love here, man. It feels good to be back. OK, there's something I need to get out the way first. The first time I saw you, I saw a very striking resemblance. I mean, possible that we could have been separated at birth. The handsome version of me. <laughs> I think I've got to ask my dad what he was doing around like, and we're almost similar ages. I'm 32, you're 31. Man, no, no, Every all your viewers know, man. I, I couldn't say that. I'll probably say the same thing to you, bro. <laughs> you used to call your father the chief, and your latest album is called Long Live the Chief. What inspired this new album? The passing of my father about five years ago, it changed my life, it changed my attitude. There's a, a proverb we used to say that you're not your own man until your father dies. And that's when I, I feel like I, I honed in on what it meant for me to be a man in my family, a man of my family. So this is the, the album that, uh, that deals with, with manhood. A boy becoming a man, man becoming a classic man, classic man becoming a chief. Both your parents were academics. Were they ever hesitant to support your musical career? No, my, my father said, uh, he said, Jidenna, why are you making music? You're not going to make any money from this. He named me Jidenna because he wanted me to be an engineer like him. Uh, so I got a lot of resistance for him. Uh, but he said, he said, as long as you 
design design your music. Don't look at it like um, you're playing guitar, just singing, rapping, or whatever. Make sure you're you're designing it. The way I've designed this 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 here computer. So that's how I look at music. That's how I go at music. My mom was supportive, and she gave me all the tools. She was the one who actually bought me my first production software, and that's how I got into making beats, not like composing, arranging. Inspired by the Harlem Renaissance of the 1800s and traditional West African design, Jadena brings dapper style to hip-hop culture. You always look really good in your music videos. Your hair always on point. I believe you have a South African barber who also keeps you in the know as to what's happening locally. Yeah, he, he's the first one to put me on Casper. He's, he put me on Black Coffee. Like I only knew AKA and certain people that had kind of crossed over in different markets, but he's the one who tell me like, the kids, they look, they're listening to this or so and so. So it's, uh, it's great. You always gotta have your, your, your finger on the pulse, your hand in the streets. You've already achieved so much in a short space of time. Classic Man being nominated for a Grammy in 2015. Where do you see your music going? That's a long, that's a, there's a long answer to that. It's called a hundred year plan. You change a hundred years of history, you change a thousand years. I wanna see a new world. And new values. Everybody right now is chasing an American dream and they're trying to place it in their country. I would like to see um, you know a new African dream but music I think is 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 not just a medium I actually think it changes people because we're listening to more music in our ears more than ever before. So music itself changes somebody but of course with the platform that I have I like to enact a lot of a lot of uh, uh, plans that at the end of the day encourage human intimacy, encourage harmony between people, encourage beauty, and some of which that I see in, in South Africa right now. Okay, the last question is, can you freestyle? I'm sure you can. Yeah, yeah. And uh, since I am able to drop a pretty mean beat, they are wanting to hear whether or not you can spit some rhymes to my flow. Yeah, sure. Okay, you yeah, you, ready? you can drop a mean beat, okay, though. Okay, okay, here we go. Well, what tempo are you about to do right now? Uh, let's 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 feel it out. Let's feel it out. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Hey, for real? Uh. Uh. Mademoiselles and dandies, I do hope you understand me. See, I'm a man that prefers truth to brandy. I prefer absinthe to candy. See, barbers understand me. But sometimes they ask me, they always ask me the question, why I be a fan when well, you could be fancy? Nice chilling in the blazer, in the bay, in the scraper. When I used to have a pager back in the 90s, back when we rhymed the phrases, doing these things for days and ages, doing these things, man, I tell you, I'm blazing on the trail. Trailblazers, nah, I never fail. Neither did you when you dropped the beat, though. Yeah, you said it was me, though. Yeah. And he's in here looking clean, bro. Clean. Man, see what I mean? Oh, oh man. Wow, I'm, I was ladies more amazed by you than me. Nah, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Jaden. Man, thank you, Chris. It's good to have you yes, here, my brother. Man. South Africa. Is yeah, we're actually really brothers, actually. Can you see it? We just found out. Now nah, you see it. Next up, designer Lee Rain tells the excellent story of how this modern garden gallery of a home became hers. The classic sound or look has enduring appeal. We know it, but it never seems to guard of style. The way tonight's home is put together is so original, it's set to become a classic. It brings art, architecture, interiors, and the outdoors together into one irresistible design. Each Sunday on their weekend walk, designer Lee and company executive Rob Rain would watch this single roof modernist structure develop. When Lee spotted a lucky bean tree in the driveway, it was her sign this dream home would be theirs. What I love about your place is that we're in the heart of Joburg, but we still get a sense of peacefulness and tranquility. It's really beautiful. Thank you. That's why we love this home, and we do. We close those doors, and we feel like we know we're nowhere near Johannesburg, and it's our little heaven. You know, you can tell a lot about a person and their family by the entrance that they have, and this door is absolutely spectacular. 
So this was a design from Marcus Neustetter and it's laser cut steel with walnut on the back and the image is from Google Maps and it's Johannesburg and during the evening when the light shines through it creates like an illusion on the floor outside which is really beautiful. Before they even bought it, Lee would imagine decorating the house until she got to do it for real. You must be a George Michael fan because I see you've got faith. I do have faith and I love faith in my entrance because his arms are wide open so he's always inviting guests and I have to share a story of how I met faith was that I went to Bronco Sprite looking for Fed Cook. We were in the area and I came across this gallery close to the Bronco Dam and walked into it, met Anton Smith and land up spending a whole afternoon there buying faith and hence why he's got his home where it is now. In this picture, um, it's called Prince Charming, it's from Abe from Hoi Paloi, and we got it because my husband's nickname is King. So when people arrive, they're always welcomed by King at the entrance. The clutter-free living area is a breathtaking reveal. Ah, uh, here we go. This is a beautiful piece of paradise. I think what we love most about it is the fact that we are entertainers and we love the outdoors. So for us, having the outdoors and having this space has made it perfect for us. What inspired the colours, the fabrics and the textures of this beautiful interior? So I'm all about simplicity, individuality, and for me, it's not copying what the trends are doing and it's not looking for references, it's about finding what works for me. So I was very lucky, I had many pieces from my previous home which fitted into the space, and then it was going out there and finding pieces that filled the gaps. And that was the most exciting thing in creating this into the space that it is today. Lee's family were in the antique business for many years and her mother never used anyone to assist when decorating. It was through her mom that she got her eye for design and decor. The seamless design of your living space was really well achieved. Thank you. And in keeping it that way, we had to find a television unit that would not actually almost block off the two. So we found this rotating TV unit, which actually rotates from the living area through to the dining area. I love the touches of color in the living room. Thank you. So when I see colour, it pops. And Cerise Pink has been my colour that's popped here. So from my bean bags to my Nell Stain picture to my orchids, which I nurture and love. And people have asked, like, why Cerise Pink? And even my husband went, Cerise Pink? And it's because you can see these little strips that have got Cerise Pink in this um, kitchen prep area. So to bring those out, I decided to introduce Cerise. I know that you're an entertainer, so this must be one of your favourite places in the home. It definitely is, and yeah, we've hosted many fun parties here. We can cook here, we prep here. That, in fact, is an actual extractor fan, so when you're cooking here, the extraction happens. Your guests will be sitting here enjoying themselves. I'm never left in a kitchen on my own. So, yeah, we're all having fun together. Collecting art is her new passion, and she's already curated her first exhibition at their home, which became an open gallery for five days. Each of the rooms in the house is almost an art installation in itself. The bedroom is one of my favorite spaces and you'll see why now. When you look outside here, every morning I wake up to the pecanut tree, the eco pool, the birds swimming, the sound of birds. It's a very happy place. A happy place indeed. What I love about this is that you follow the same theme throughout the home. Definitely, and I think all bedrooms almost mirror themselves. And I've kept my antique pieces because they are comforting to me. These two pieces have been with me for probably about 13 to 15 years. And then, of course, my cat. <laughs> What's his name? His Mickey. Name Mickey Moo. Um, oh, how did I guess that? Mickey. <laughs> one green eye and one blue eye. Did he come with the bed? No. Is he an antique as well? He's an antique. <laughs> So as you can see, there's not much cupboard space in this bedroom. So between the bedroom and the bathroom, there is a walk-in dressing room. And we all know women like clothing. <laughs> Every woman's dream. Completely. So I do love my handbags and my shoes, my dresses, etc. But there is one <laughs> challenge. Tell me about this ladder. So because of my height, I can't actually reach the clothing at the top. So I have to climb the ladder to go and get my change of clothing. But I try to put winter at the top and keep summer in the bottom for summer months. Well, let me tell you something. You're not short, you're fun size. Thank Big difference. <laughs> so from my dressing room into my overindulgent bathroom where everything is oversized. Wow, this is huge. I've never seen a shower and a bath this big in my life before. I can literally break it down in here. That's how big it is. And just to give you a perspective of how big the bath is, look at that scale. That is huge, man. I mean, Chad Leclerc's got nothing on me in here. Chris, enough of your fun and games. Let me go pour us a glass of wine while you meet the gentleman who created my dream. 
On their Sunday walks, Lee and Rob watched architect Enrico De Fonchio's vision rise from the ground. This is quite a minimalistic style of architecture. Uh, it's really about uh, creating spaces that are very calm and uh, make an environment for the art to stand out, and the furniture to stand out, and for the views to come in. So it's very minimalist, very reduced. The living area has a 17-meter frameless glass door. That must have been quite a challenge to put in place. It was. Uh, it involved a lot of work with our supplier. It involved studying similar things that have been done before. And the effect we wanted was then when the door is closed, you actually don't see it. It's frameless glass, and both frames, top and bottom, are hidden in the ceiling and in the floor. So it really gives the sense that the house is always open. And when actually you want to open the sliding door, it's automatic and it disappears in the cavity. And actually gives the sense that the lounge, the living area, is an open pavilion that, that never gets closed. So it's a, it's a wonderful way to relate with the climate here. You know, it allows you to keep the house open for most of the year. The house has some of Rob in it. He's in the cement industry, so appreciates what contractor Francois Kleinsmith achieved with the floors. Francois, I can imagine that this was an architect's dream, but to have brought this to life must have been quite a feat. Yeah, no, sure, um, but like everything in life that's challenging, it's very rewarding. The floors are ground down concrete, so it's effectively concrete with pigment in it, a special stone, but you can do it with normal concrete as well. It's purely ground down to such a shiny finish. It takes a long time and it comes with its own challenges. For example, the wine cellar, which we've done a few months after the actual project, it took us a month just to get the floor done because the floor needs to cure, go through a curing process before you can do the rest of the structure. So yeah, it's challenging, but as I said, very, very rewarding. The man of the house also collects what he considers to be liquid works of art, and this is his gallery. Hey, he thought I'd find you here. <laughs> just in time. I've just found a bottle of wine for us to enjoy. Very nice. Um, so this is my husband's favorite place in the entire house, his wine cellar. He's a collector of burgundies, hence why this is not an area I'm allowed to go to. But we can choose from my small area here, and I've chosen the perfect bottle. Oh, and uh, it's maybe an area that I'm allowed to go to? Not this time, but definitely next. <laughs> to this couple, Bliss is sipping a Pinot Noir under the Tipuana tree, whilst cracking open pecan nuts dislodged by the birds. It's all about sharing in style. It was absolutely great spending the day with lovely Lady Lee. We just want to say thank you very much for inviting us into your home, and here's to the best of the good life. Standing here, I'm man enough to admit it. I have house envy, and a lot of it. Does it feel better now that I've said it? Not really. Still to come, smoking salmon, chicken on chestnut burrs, and 360 degrees of pork crackling with food blogger Kamini Patha. It's well known that we eat with our eyes first, especially in a time of Instagram. For blogger Carmeny Patha, her cup runneth over when she walked into this eatery. That's a feast for the eyes and sheer spoiling in every other sense. The Short Market Club in the Mother City is a second generation success story. Chef Wesley Randalls and manager Simon Widdison opened the venue with the backing of two people they've worked for over the last 10 years. Renowned restaurateurs Luke and Sandaline Dale Roberts. The delightfully quirky design was all sandaline. What inspired the whole feel and the look of the Short Market Club? First of all, we wanted something kind of luxurious, smoky, old-fashioned, um, kind of like an old English library cigar bar. So that was kind of the starting point. You created all the distinctive decor elements. What was the idea behind them? I did. I know, I can't believe it myself. I look at them and I go, oh wow, I made that. Um, yes, I started with a chair. You basically use a school chair. And then I thought, oh, it would be quite nice to have um, leather covered tops. Because tops are always so hard and, you know, I'm so tired of either a cloth or nothing everywhere. So I decided the leather and then I thought about the brass. So I brought all of that together and, yeah, it kind of worked. I just see what I love and I use it and kind of feel a space. Like the dining room of an old cruise ship, there's a sense of occasion here. The centerpiece is this wall of framed paper butterflies, conceptualized by artist Mark Rotenbach. 
Mark, what an incredible installation. But not only is it beautiful to look at, it's also something that's steeped in personal history for the owners. The paper, the actual material I've used, comes from the restaurant, things like log sheets, shopping lists, photographs. So all this paper, all the material that I've used has personal meaning and is intimately linked to the people who belong to this place. How long did the actual creation process take from conceptualization to actually creating this? It took me four months. The first thing was to get a background, which is a, a gradation of of color, which is the blue to the pink. And behind that was um, the idea to create a scene, almost as though you're looking through this, through into windows, and there's like a sunrise or a sunset. I think the part which is least seen is the, the laying of the, the paper onto these fine threads, which is sewing cotton, which was really laborious, because each thing's placed with tweezers. Usually with entomological installations, you'll see that the butterflies are pinned with these little pins, but here you've actually used them as decorative elements. The pins I've just used as little accents, almost like little jewels to make a little bit of sparkle here and there. But the suspension pulls them away from the background, which then allows beautiful shadows to be cast. So you've got a lovely sense of three dimension and depth. This atmospheric braai barbecue is a favorite element of Chef Wesley Randall's open kitchen. Wesley, what part did you play in creating the concept behind the Short Market Club? Uh, my part was purely based on the food and creating a design of food that would work in sand lean space. It was, had to be a natural organic progression of creativity in order to, to make the food match the space, not be created from outside and brought in. And how did you change around the menu to come up with the best dishes? The dishes stood out themselves, and that came down to the pure sourcing of the ingredient. We took on the ethos of respecting the product as a whole and not manipulating it in any other way than just keeping it true to itself and that would be the hero item on the plate. The salmon is served with smouldering flair. Yet another reason food blogger Carmeny Pather approves. I follow you on Instagram, so I know you're quite a fan of the Short Market Club. What is it about this restaurant that you enjoy? But I think the fact that it is a premium and it feels like an occasion type of space, but it's also very relaxed. I like the way the combination of food flavors and it takes you to different parts of the world. I'm a huge fan of the Short Market Club. All right, guys, what we have here is um, Petit Poisson and your porchetta. The Petit Poisson comes from Elgin. Um, it's been stuffed with uh, chestnuts, feinboss, uh, lemon, and it's been slow roasted over the fire. So your porchetta is slow roasted uh, just over the fire and it's just cooked enough so you have 360 degrees of crackling. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy your meal. I cannot wait to taste this. The theatrical feinboss element of the chicken dish makes it an obvious highlight for Carmeny's blog. An accomplished foodie, she also knows good crackling when she sees it. After winning a reality TV show, Carmeny hosted food and travel series Girl Eat World, where she took in the cuisine of 10 countries. But this cooking makes it hard to leave home again. This chicken really is one of the most incredible dishes I've eaten. Usually one thinks of chicken as a very simple dish, but somehow he's managed to use all these complex flavors and not let one overwhelm the other. So, really enjoying it. This pork is cooked beautifully. You've got the contrast of the crackling, which is really crisp, and then the pork has been rendered down, so you've got that luxurious fat as well. Really beautiful. All right, guys, and to finish off, uh, we're going to do a lemon tart and a rhubarb creme catalan. So it looks like lemon tart, but it's got a lemon geranium infused in the crust. It's an brulee, and it's served with a strawberry and a marcy ice cream. The rhubarb catalan, it's got mascarpone in the base and then a set. And to finish it off, we've got a bit of a rose petal and ginger meringue. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Well, what did I tell you? Is this not the most exquisite restaurant? Indeed, and a visual and taste expedition of note. I think my, my culinary frequent flyer miles are sitting right up here. <laughs> Destination, happy place. Indeed. Carmeny aims to visit and taste something from every country in the world. She'll have to if she wants to find anything close to this. Food, design, music, sport, culture and love. We hope we've given you at least six different reasons to celebrate being South African this coming Heritage Day. Have an outstanding Saturday, and until next Thursday, good night and God bless. Next week, I'm a survivor, says this little guy, as the world celebrates International Rhino Day.
Letty and Boy Ngobeni host a party worthy of their 26 years together. Free diving filmmaker Hanley Prinsloo is a mermaid making big waves in conservation. And the best dishes of Mexico and SA combine in a fiesta of a dinner table. <laughs>